All right, Raw WWE Draft Day Two is done, and I told you there wasn't gonna really be anything event worthy for the draft picks. Uh, like Friday, I was like, really, there ain't nothing happened. I seen everybody uh, basically complain that everybody pretty much stay on the same show. And to be honest, we sort of got that here as well too. I was like, outside of the NXT picks, you know, which I was like, cool, you know. I was like, someone we knew where it was like, Ilya. I was like, uh, I think, you know, some people, I've seen some people did say like, like, Lucaria. Um, I was like, but I didn't think Blair. I was like, I don't, and I only really knew her because I was like, I know she left her AEW, came back to WWE and uh, whatnot. But not really any significant change or crossover. I was like, the only one I could think of of substance was really damage control, which, you know, I had as a somebody that needs to move over. And uh, LWO moved over instead of uh, fin, uh, Los Fantasmo. Uh, I think I, I probably butchered that on my bad. Um, yeah, so no, no changes that was like, oh, or nothing. No, no, it wasn't that. Um, but, uh, and I was like, to be honest, Raw will just kind of just, the other stuff going around Raw was like, was like really good. Uh, the matches was straight, uh, but nothing really nothing exciting happened I guess that's that's why that's why I wanted to point out and say nothing nothing too crazy nothing too much uh, I was like we could just pretty much just go ahead with the rundown that like Becky comes out and I'm not gonna lie it did seem a little bit awkward in some sense of you know like she's trying to you know basically explain why she got the title and stuff and i was like oh, okay cool just run the mill promo and until she got to a point where she where uh she basically like i haven't had this title in like two years and i don't know if somebody in the crowd says something but she sort of like stopped talking it was a little bit of quietness then you had a the crowd being like like you deserve it not strongly, but not, but also like like they're not fully behind it. It's like it's like somebody got a chant going, and everybody was like, "Oh, okay, cool. We're gonna we're gonna do the wave." It it really just felt really awkward, and especially considering that after the week, uh, you know, should Becky won the title, did she deserve it? All this other stuff that it was sort of like, it was really weird timing. I was like, it, "That's all. That's all I gotta say." Uh, Liv comes out basically saying that, hey, it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have the title, and, I mean, she got a fair point, but Becky's also like, yeah, but it's also wasn't for me, you also would have had the title, and Nia comes out being like, I would have had the title if it wasn't for y'all too, but she's about to go smack down, so it doesn't really matter, she's gonna have a match with Liv, uh, later on, and that's how that goes, um, yeah, like I said, I'm not gonna get into the draft pick, because it's there were really, I sort of said the noteworthy ones. Uh, but we did really get a great match between Gunther and Xavier Woods, which one, Gunther always gives us a really great match no matter what. And also, I think Xavier Woods is really underrated. Uh, I mean, all of New Day, but also because he's in New Day and he sort of looked at the third person of New Day, or at least, I guess, now, the, you know, but... He's all, but he doesn't get the credit also because New Day's silly and people just can't deal with that sometimes. I'm like, yes, in the live crowd, yes, but he doesn't get the same type of push in the same way that, like, like Kofi got it because he was the longtime veteran guy, you know. Big E did, because I was like, well, look, he got a push in NXT. He's going to get a push here kind of thing, and it just so happened to work out that way. But Xavier, anyway, so, look. I was like, it was a really good match. I was like, Gunther was chopping the hell out of Xavier Wood, which is what he does. But Xavier Wood was going at him with chops. But it's like, for every three chops Xavier Woods did, uh, Gunther just had one chop, and that pretty much uh, settles all that. Uh, but the turn of the tide, basically, was once Xavier Wood got his foot caught up into the ropes. I was like, Gunther just started, like, kicking the hell out of it. Then he slap-chopped the damn leg. 
And then once they was able to, once he was back in the ring, as Xavier Woods tried to do a little bit of like pumping up, didn't matter. Gunther basically got him in a Boston Crab. Uh, yeah, 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 Boston, yeah. Wait, no, 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 not a Boston Crab. Uh, I was like, look, he got him in a one leg, one leg crab, whatever. I was like, I can't think of the name right now. And and it was like, oh, oh, and Kofi was looking, he's looking for a towel. He's like, I'm gonna throw it in. I thought he was gonna ring the bell, to be honest. And Xavier was like, no, no, don't throw it in as as uh as a uh, Ludwig is over here, like throw, you better throw it in, you better throw it in. Uh and then then I was like, as has Xavier was trying to pump up, trying to, he he breaks free and he tries again, and it doesn't matter, because Gunther basically just takes that leg, flips him over, and instead of putting him back in that, he basically put him in a modified STFU kind of way, you know. And was hitting the hell out of Xavier Woods in the face, and basically Xavier Woods tapped out. Uh, and I was like, I know they're going to, but they're both going to be in the King of the Ring. I don't know if they're going to match up against each other just because this match already happened. That uh, I was like, I could see because I was like, also you know you got like Drew and stuff in there too. So I was like, like I'm not going to. No, there's no way they're going to have Drew and Gunther face off against each other that or that in that no I don't, I don't think there's any way that they're gonna do that that's kind of said too good to be true that's too good to be true like whoever wins this is the king of the ring i just don't i was like i don't see it but i was like i could see xavier would probably run up against drew mcintyre more so because they also had a little beef as well too for a while that while compared to like going at gunther again just to like lose to gunther again um but yeah so phenomenal match uh, also, we getting uh, Jay Uso talking at this time, but don't care about the, really the interview in the background. Uh, you see Liv Morgan leaving out of a room. Uh, I had to rewind it a couple of times because I was like making sure that we ain't seen nothing else beforehand. Nope, we didn't. But you see Liv Morgan walk out of the room. Okay, give it, a, give it a few ticks. Give it a few ticks. Give it a few ticks. Then Dom happens to walk out of the same room. And I don't know, but that just has reminiscences of some high school shit to me. Where it was just like, oh, high school, college, you get what I'm saying. That type of thing where it's just like, all right, hey, you leave about five Mississippis after me. Nobody will ever be able to tell. And when you're stupid as a kid, that's what you do. Except for these are sort of grown adults and campers are everywhere. So they did it anyway. And so guess what? All that stuff is going to start to fly. I was like, also, I want to know, like, never mind. You know what? I'm about to say, what can you do with one arm? But never mind. Y'all had the jokes for me. Uh, I was like, I already done ran through them in my head. Hit that enough. You could do a one arm. Then, hey. Anyway. Um, I was like, I will say with one of the draft picks, uh, with, I guess, Rey Mysterio going on Raw. And this is why I didn't think that they... Because I was like, now I'm like, that's going to be a thing more constant that I, I always felt was sort of good that they sort of had them away from each other and then they sort of, like, run into each other, either, like, pay-per-views or, you know, to, like, how we got towards WrestleMania and he, like, appeared or whatever. So it is sort of going to be like how do they do it without overdoing it with giving enough time and space but be, you know what I'm saying especially because Ray also got two wins over him so how how do you tackle that as well but um, anyway besides that I was like Logan Logan Paul and I Shall Speed came out to basically do the draft picks or whatever and Okay, who cares? So anyway, and, to, and basically in that, Logan Paul comes to the ring, and he's like over here like, how Jay going to talk all this smack? You know, was like, nobody even knows who he is. He's the ugly Uso. And all of a sudden, Jay comes out here. And, you know, they just have some smack talk. But let's get to the funnier part, is that pretty much after, I was like, Judgment Day comes in here, and they're like, oh, Uso, you always alone. You only know two words, ye and Uso. Uh, I was like, they start beating down Jey Uso. Logan Paul goes over to the side and gets uh, the Super Bowl rings from Patrick Mahomes. Which, if Patrick Mahomes a heel, I mean, I was like, I mean, they're in Kansas City. They're going to cheer him, which they did. But also, I know, you know, I know he said that he's sort of a villain now because he keeps on winning. 
But I was like, I didn't know he actually was going to be a villain. So I was like, I think that's kind of cool. I kind of like it, to be honest. But he gave Logan Paul the championship rings. Logan Paul goes into the ring, and he about to lay at the smack down. So he thinks on Jay Uso, but Jay ducks. Boom, JD gets hit right across the knocker. And every, they're like, oh, my God. And then Jay just like, it's, Jay is doing, like, now it's like the second or third time Jay is doing. And it's like, it's funny because it's like, it's Jay Uso being funny, of course. But it's like R-Truth-esque, where it's just like, do us like, the comedy stuff is in our truth type of mode. Where, like, Jay is just in between them. And he's like, oh, man, you see his face? And, and, uh. Finn is like, I know, right? And then not realizing that it's like, oh, he's like, no, you the dude I'm supposed to be hitting. And Jay just runs out and all this other stuff. So funny. Uh, good point. Um, so anyway, uh, I was like, Chad is in the back, gets gets a little bit kicked by Sammy. Bronson Reed and Sammy, they're about to have a fight. I was like, I was like, it's, it's, it literally looks like look, Sammy's going to win. That's how it's going to go. Uh, but because of that, Chad comes out here. Th- I was like, breaks up the match. German suplex. Uh, and then basically just puts angle the ankle lock onto Sami Zayn and cross him up. Or, you know, like 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 cross up his, his leg with his legs as well, too. Triangle hold his leg, whatever you want to call it. Um and then, like, you know, Sammy's over here in pain or whatever like that. Chad, you know, they're trying to get Chad off him. Bronson Reese, who now he drops him. So Sammy's out of it. Um, I was like, and, uh, you know, and then Chad picks up the title all over Sammy. Bronson Reed doesn't like it. Basically, Samoan drops him, and he picks up the title. I imagine that we're going to probably get a triple threat at Backlash for, like, for the Intercontinental Championship between all three of them. Uh, Bronson Reed did stay on Raw, so I don't, I was like, I don't expect that they would have Sammy lose this early. I was like, at Backlash, I don't expect any championship to really change this early. Um, I guess you could do this in a way where Bronson Reed loses and you still could have the feud between Sammy and Chad. But also, too, I'm like, how many times are we going to have Bronson Reed lose at the same time? But then again, I was like, hey, that's just sort of the role you got to play until them two. So I think it's going to be a triple threat uh, for the title, and we'll see how that goes. Um, so I will say that, um, so APA comes out here doing their, uh, you know, the draft stuff. And Drew McIntyre, like, so I will say CM Punk got drafted like a round, round or two earlier. Then Drew. Drew finally gets drafted. He's over here mad that CM Punk is again is got drafted before him. And he's like talking to John. He's like, oh, CM Punk is all at home while I was like me with my elbow. I decided to wrestle. Then you see up in the luxury box, CM Punk is like, I'm here. What are you talking about? You crazy. Um, but then as we see later on, Drew is up there at the very top trying to go through all the luxury boxes, trying to find them. See, see him. I would like go to the one that CM Punk is at. All he sees is a picture of CM Punk that's signed and whatnot, and he's just frustrated. And then you see CM Punk basically going to the ring and basically calls out Drew and let him chant his name. And that was pretty much it. He really, I was like, I was like, I'm doing like a quick read from all this stuff. Uh, I was like, we also got. Sammy, he went, he was in the back after everything. And Maxine is over here hyped up with the Alpha Academy about being like, Do you see me? I was doing good in the in the rumble. Oh well in the little the little we're gonna call it a rumble. And Gable's like, Did you win? No, you didn't. So who cared about a couple uh two, two eliminations? Who cares? Whatever. Uh you need to go do your stuff and you two better go ahead and win some gold and some tag team match. Or whatever. Uh, so, you know, basically, so y'all still losers. Uh, but we did get Maxine Dupree versus Candice LeRae. Uh, and Maxine Dupree came out here and wrestled. I was like, uh, I can't I can't tell if the crowd is doing the shoes at her or booing. Like, kind of like their people, kind of like when she does, like when she comes out, 
you hear cheers and then you hear something that is like it's something else. Then in the ring when she does her thing, I was like, I hear cheer, then I hear something else, and I can't tell if it's booze or shoosh or whatever. Uh, because it sounds like it's all three, to be honest. Like it sounds like the people that's like cheering because she is a face, but also people who are booing her for the same reason they were probably booing her before, but also the shoes sound like it could be toned in with the boo, so that might be on me. Um, but, I'm like, she was she was doing a fisherman hook German suit, I mean, a fisherman hook suplex. I was like, she did a reverse caterpillar. I was like, she did a nip up. She was over here, but she was getting in her bag, pretty much. Then Indy pretty much threw Ivy Niles into the post, and Cancel Ray pretty much took advantage and was able to pin Maxine Dupree. And that's it. And Maxine, I mean, and Candace and Indy is going to SmackDown. So this little beef is over, you know. Because I was like, I doubt Alpha Academy goes SmackDown, at least. Or maybe, I mean, I doubt they haven't broken up anybody else yet. Um, and then speaking of which, we got the Awesome Truth versus Alpha Academy. It went how you thought it would. I was like, uh, the Awesome Truth won. Alpha Academy lost. Um, yeah, that, that was pretty, I was like, that pretty much was in that match. Um, I was like, then we got, we did get Nia Jax and Liv, and I was like, you know, it, it went as a typical match of, like, Nia Jax is bigger than Liv, so Liv has got to do a lot of all these fast move paces and stuff like that. Um, it, it, was, it was weird, the pacing, just because, it was like, it got a chance to breathe, but also... I was like, Nia wasn't crazy dominant. It was really just her just taking a whole bunch of blows or whatever. Tiffany was on the outside, so I was waiting for Tiffany to sort of uh, interfere with Nia, but she never did. And then you just sort of seen a glimpse of Naomi, which did happen, where Naomi just basically started beating up on Tiffany, and they just went and they just went basically on the other side of the barricade because they were sitting at ringside. I was like, they were sitting in the audience. Then they was at ringside, and then they just fighting or whatever. And... Nothing really happens. Nia just sort of knocks out Naomi, and then Liv was able to basically do her rush of moves and stuff like that and get the win over Nia with Nia going over SmackDown. But also, they had Nia lose clean, you know, but Nia's also... So I was like, I didn't necessarily like that. I would have, I guess I would have preferred that wouldn't be a DQ just because I like, she already started beef with Naomi and Tiffany that that one could have been a DQ or whatever. But at the same, I mean, and... But at the same time, Liv does need a win for her uh, revenge tour, which she's getting a match for to Becky at Backlash. And I don't know how that one's going to go either, just because I don't, on one hand, I'm like, does Liv need to get the title this early from Becky? I mean, it could still go into her revenge tour because she keeps losing, almost like Drew in a sense. But... At the same time, do you just go ahead and give it to her now, and she just starts being a tyrant? I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how that one's gonna go yet. Um, then you got pretty much, then you got Jay Uso, Andrade, uh, Ricochet, Andrade going to SmackDown, so this is pretty much gonna be null and void. Judgment Day finally did get drafted later on, um, which didn't really matter. Uh, I was like JD, I was like they was in the back and they was just like, you know. Don, I was like, Damien's over here tearing into all of them, being like, like y'all need to stay out of my business. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. And then uh, JD takes off the towel from the hit, and it, you just see it's just swelling up. It's all purple. You can see the indention from the ring and stuff like that. It's that... That shit was so... First of all, everybody's reaction because they're like, ooh, that's bad. And it did look bad. And it was horrible. And you just don't know. I'm like, in a way, I'm like, what was that? Was that real? Like, cause that one... Like, I mean, maybe the outside people, but I like the indentions. I'm like... Then they go out to the ring, and everybody's like, he can't even see out the light because, you know, they're playing it really well. And everybody's like, ah, don't let us see it or whatever. Uh, but pretty much towards the end of the match, uh, I was like, Damien is going on his, like, Super Saiyan Damien thing where he just going running through everybody. Um, and he's about to basically choke slam the hell out of, uh, oh, thank you. I was like, he's, I was like, before, I was like, he's about to choke slam the hell out of 
J and then J D pushes him, pushes J off the top rope when Damien was gonna choke slam him. J D uh, Damien's like, what like why would you do that? I was like and then after that he basically was getting he got kicked in the face. J D got taken out. Finn sort of got the tag, but then by then Jay speared uh Finn splash match over. Damien loses again because of the comp for the complication of all the team, pretty much. Um I also forgot to say that when Jay was uh about to get bit, was getting bit up by Logan Paul and all of them, that Braun Strowman came out and saved him. And by God, Braun Strowman is huge as hell. I know we've been talking about everybody returns and how big as hell they look. He looks bigger. And and like not not like I was like, I mean, like he does look like it's not it's not I was like, I don't know how to really describe it because it's not fatter. Like it's like a country big, you know what I'm saying? Where it's just like it's like, yeah, he has like a belly, but you might hurt your hand hitting him. That like and then everything else was big. I was like, yeah, he I was like, yo, he looks enormous. I didn't think they were gonna I thought he might be with the, you know, the howdy stuff, so I was surprised they showed him to be honest, and that's why I thought he looked like that specifically, almost like how he used to back in the Wyatt days. But um but anyway, no, that was that was raw. I I was like an alright show. Draft just was what it was. Storylines improved. Um yeah, nothing nothing really of sorts here. Um yeah, alright. Anyway, uh that was raw. We'll see how this all goes leading us to backlash, cause it's only like three matches, so three or four matches so far. And we'll see how that goes. Anyway, till then. Peace, I'm out.